Hello, welcome to this presentation on soil cultivation. This presentation was put together by Dr. Carl Danneberger and myself, Pam Sherrod. First of all, let's talk about the three C's. Soil cultivation is a practice designed to improve soil conditions so that turf grasses can grow healthily. One of the most common reasons to practice soil cultivation is to address soil compaction. Soils tend to compact naturally over time, but will become compacted much sooner on high traffic areas like athletic fields. The most common method of relieving soil compaction is by soil coring. Soil compaction occurs when the percent soil solids and the water holding pores increase, while the percent air pores decrease compared to an uncompacted soil. Normally an uncompacted soil will have roughly 25% air pores, 25% water and 45-50% to soil solids. A compacted soil will result in a significant de decrease in the amount of air pores, as shown in this figure, comparing uncompacted and compacted soils. Compacted soils are poor growing mediums for turf grass plants that can result in significant decline of the turf. Soil compaction is often a serious problem on athletic fields. On this baseball field, the compacted soil has resulted in a decline in turf quality. Poor water infiltration is also a sign of compacted soil conditions, which is this case is reflected by the ponding of water on this baseball field. Detrimental effects of soil compaction on the actual turf plant includes a decrease in root growth and activity, less stored plant energy in the form of carbohydrates due to an associated increase in respiration, increased plant temperatures and an increased susceptibility to environmental stress. Coring is a mechanical means of relieving compaction by providing holes or channels to improve air movement into and through the soil. Coring increases air spaces, improves gas exchange and helps reduce thatch. Thatch is a layer of organic material between the soil and the plant that can become spongy and hold water. Coring helps to break that up. In the previous pictures, a coring machine used hollow tines penetrating the soil to a depth of about 3 inches. This is a schematic drawing of the impact of a hollow tine on turf. To improve soil compaction, at least 10% of the surface area needs to be cored. As you can see in this table, the amount of surface area affected depends upon the size and spacing of the tines used. For example, with a quarter inch diameter tine spaced two inches apart, just over 1% of the surface is affected. That particular machine would have to run over the same area 10 times to make an improvement. By comparison, three quarter inch times at the same spacing affects 11% of the surface and would only need to be used once. Benefits to coring include improved turf grass growth around the core holes, as shown here. This picture shows the root with root hairs next to particles of sand. The root hairs are responsible for 90% of the absorption, and so any management practices done to improve root growth and root hair development cannot be underestimated. Coring also penetrates and helps break up layering that may occur in the soil profile, as shown here. Layering serves as a barrier to root penetration, especially during summer stress periods. After coring is performed, cores may be removed or reincorporated back onto the turf. Most school and park and rec facilities will leave cores on the field to break down over a couple of weeks. Cores are typically removed from higher maintenance fields. Returning cores has its advantages and its disadvantages. The advantages being that it enhances thatch degradation, acts as a top dressing and there is no need for core disposal. The disadvantages are that it can promote layering if the soil profile varies and you may be incorporating poor soil back into the profile. Core removal can be done mechanically or by hand. Removing cores is often done in conjunction with top dressing. The amount of top dressing required is the amount needed to fill the holes. New technology in sports turf management includes recycled dresses, which pull cores, then pulverize them and put them back on the surface as a top dressing. 
Another version of the traditional coring method is to use smaller diameter tines on closer spacing, called quadratines. Quadratining is often done during summer months to increase soil gas exchange with minimal disruption to the turf. There are numerous other types of small tines beside the tines used in quadratining. For example, these solid tines are referred to as star tines or slip tines. These types of tines do not have the same effect on soil compaction relief, but they are useful in creating an open surface that drains quickly. In some situations, coring beyond the 3 inch depth is required. Drilling or deep tining are done for deeper soil penetration. This picture shows a coring unit used using tines that are drill type in nature. Deep drilling was initially done by hand, but now mechanical drilling devices are available. Drilling in combination with filling the holes with sand or calcined clay is popular. The term drill and fill is used when drilling is done in conjunction with filling the holes with sand or calcined clay. Solid and hollow tine machines are also available that can punch holes deep into the profile. Sometimes referred to as verti draining or deep tining, the tines have a kicking action when they exit the soil, creating cracks and fissures in the soil profile. Some of the tines can reach down as deep as 16 inches. Other types of tines can cut through the soil and also have a vibrating action, like the shock wave and groundbreaker machines shown here. The dry jet is a machine that injects high pressure water into the soil, causing a shattering of the soil profile. The crack it creates are then filled with sand. Here you can see the impact of injecting sand into a soil sod layer that had been laid over a sand root zone. The sand channel bypasses the soil sod layer, improving surface water infiltration. This treatment is normally done early or late in the year to allow for turf recovery. In conclusion, gas exchange is important in maintaining healthy turf. Coring is one means that can promote oxygen into the root zone.